This is Jan Hibbard from Log Cabin Leather for another session of my Maker Monday series, or my Workshop Wednesday series. Sorry guys, I'm on the wrong day. Um, today, again, the Workshop Wednesday series, I take you into my workshop and I show you about making handmade leather products. So this week is all about creating floral designs on um, leather. If you join me in my Maker Monday series, on Monday I talked about traditional floral designs such as this. And some of the less traditional designs that I do. Now there's different ways you can call these different things, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit and then I'm going to talk about some of the other events and things I have coming up this month. So the tool, traditional tool designs like this, I mean it's something that's been around for years. I don't do too many things like this anymore, um, but the same tools that I use, that are used to create this, I use to create some of these other floral designs and so forth. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to introduce you to some of the tools that I use and so forth. And then I'm actually going to work on something with what I call the Meadow Flowers design, which is one of my most popular designs. It's something um, I've been making for years. And actually, I didn't bring that over here. Let me grab that real quick. So this is the Meadow Flowers design. Oops. <laughs> just a basic flower field. Now this is one of my oldest designs that I created myself. I talked about on Monday a little bit more about how I got involved in making that kind of thing. I make it on belts. I make it on um, many other things. I talked about that. The things with looms on them, this kind of bird, are probably my most popular things and I make more things with those than anything else. But second comes this floral design. So this is something, again, I made up myself years and years ago. It's still been one of my most popular designs um, since then. So now as far as the tools, um, one of the most basic leather tools is something called a swivel knife. This is a swivel knife. Um, it has a blade. It turns. I'm rotating the blade. This is one, again, straight blade. I don't use a straight blade so much because again what I'm carving is generally quite small and so to get the detail I need the corner to go in um, to make things. So that again when you're doing this kind of carving you're cutting around all the edges of the items. So I'm going to show that a little bit here in a minute. Um, and then the metal flowers design is really just used by hammering different shapes in which I call stamping. It's really all called tooling. Um, Whereas when you're doing this, I call this really more carving, because it really is more like carving. Um, whereas the stamps here are going to be more like, you know, just hammered in shapes in different positions. So that's what I'm going to work on today. And then, I'm, again, I'm going to tell you about some other events that are going on. So I'm going to turn the camera now onto my workshop table here so you can see what I'm doing. So here we are down here. So now here is the swivel knife. I was going to demonstrate that on. Um, so again, I've got my swivel knife. I did. I had a piece here. I was going to practice something else on, and I know I don't see it. Oh uh, well. <laughs> there goes my organization. <laughs> my skills are lacking in the organization thing. So now this is a swivel knife. These are called um, 3D stamps. So those are something I can use as well. Um, these are, you know, again, butterfly shapes and things like that. And then I have my traditional stamping tools over here. So now with the swivel knife is what I'm going to make the stems first. Now this, again, I'm making a couple different things. This is going to be like a travel sketchbook. Um, smaller size, good to, you know, take with you if you're traveling. So I'm going to make the metal flowers design on that. And then I'm going to make one of the pencil cups. I talked about the pencil cup I made one with the looms on it. I'm going to make one with a floral design. So the first thing with leather, again, it has to be a certain kind of leather. So this is vegetable tanned leather. That is what you can put the designs on. And you need to wet the leather first. And again, some people soak it, but again, what I'm doing, it does, I'm not doing it for any length of time. It's not, you know, going to take me hours to carve it. I'm doing smaller things. Um, now what I did first is I took this tool, which is called a stitching groover, and I went around the edges, or I will on this one, which is where I'm going to make my stitching lines. Now this is going to be the pencil cup. And so this is just, it just scribes a little line. And I do it very lightly because really what I'm only doing is I'm marking so I get my stitches straight. And that's something I will do afterwards on this one. 
that is the base of that, and which I did cut on my Glowforge because um, it's faster, but really to do the sides with, you know, straight corners, it's pretty easy to do. So since this one is wet, I'm going to start with that one, and then generally I start drawing some stems. It's going to be for the flowers, and they random. Some taller than others, some smaller. And so those are going to be the stems of my flowers. Traditionally now, some of these bigger stamps, if I'm going to use those, I need to get those in there first. So now this is called a 3D stamp, so you place that on, and then you put this hammer, this handle on top of it. And and so now that didn't, it came out a little darker on one side than another, which is, again, I'm not hammering even. So then you very carefully place the stamp back where you had it. I don't want to hammer too dark because sometimes the corner, like the corners of the stamp, will come out if you. All right, so now we've got that butterfly, and then I'm just going to do this butterfly here. The larger the stamp, the harder it is to get it even. So that's, you know, the first thing. These are the bigger ones. They tend to jump around sometimes. They tend to move. So then I have a lot of flowers over here. And, again, I just start stamping those. Different flowers in different places. So just random flowers placed along in different places. And again, I'm not going to do this whole thing because... And then once I've done all the flowers, then I go back and I start doing leaves. So we have different leaf shapes in here. And some of them I, you know, make up... And again, a lot of times at craft shows, I demonstrate things like this. I will make up design, you know, stamp designs while I'm at a craft show. Of course, most craft shows have, you know, are not existing anymore. Although I actually do have one this summer now that I think is going to be a go. Um, so that was a surprise. I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's in Wolfboro. I don't know if I wrote down my dates with me. You know, and so forth like that. So I keep stamping, and then I'm going to fill in more flowers and things like that. So I kind of build it as I go along. Um, it will have more stems, more flowers, more leaves, things like that. So then afterwards, I'll go back and, you know, add more leaves. And again, notice these are the sm smaller, so I don't have to hit them as hard. And I fill it up, and I basically make the whole floral design like this. I was going to show something else, and I seem to have lost the piece of leather that I had it here, so I don't know if I can grab a scrap here real quick. Again, now this is a much thicker piece of leather, but again, I was just going to demonstrate a little bit more of the carving with my other tool. And again, so if I was going to draw a flower or something, I have like a lily here, and I can't really draw that quickly. And then, so you traditionally use the, the swivel knife to cut all that out. So you traditionally bring the knife towards you and you turn as you're going.
And so that's, again, camera like that. And then in this case, you would take a lot of these other tools and hand them around. Now, I've shown lots of other videos where I've done carving. So, again, I'm not going to go... doing is you're pressing the background down to make the center of the piece stand up. Right now I've talked about my other stamp designs, which again is something here, which is a, a stamp design, but actually these tools that I'm using on this are called veiners, and really the purpose of those was to do some of these floral designs, which is why they're called veiners. And they used you know, a little small. And here, something like this is used, and it's stamped over and over again, partially, to make the designs on the leaf there. I don't know if I've used this, the bigger ones on this one. Some in here. So that's a smaller one in here. It's just, again, I'm doing part of it, a very little edge of the corner there. But those are called veiners, and they really were to make these floral designs like that. And again, I use them far differently because I make a lot of the stamped geometric designs and so forth out of them. Um, but again, this is the traditional tooling like this. And then again, you know, so you continue to do that until you get that whole thing done. And then there's, again, sometimes the veiners you would put in the middle. I mean, in this one you wouldn't necessarily. And then there's something called a pear shader. Which a lot of times on flowers, in the center of the flower, you might go something. And this may not be the best example of a flower. You know, you kind of pressing down the center of the flower. You're trying to give the flower dimension, basically. And things like that. To put it to, you know, and again, that's not really how you use it on this one. I mean, this isn't the right shape flower for something like that. And sometimes, again, these, you'd go on the flower and you're making kind of the veins up it like that. Um, again, not necessarily on the lily. So, the, you know, and again, so those are more traditional carving designs. Um, the flower design like this. Again, I will continue to make more stems, more flowers, more leaves, add all that in there. Um, so that's basically how the designs are created. And then after that, it is colored. Some of my other videos, again, I make three videos a week. I have my Maker Monday series, my Workshop Wednesday series, and my Spotlight Saturday series, which I started the beginning of January. So every week I have those three videos, and I've talked about all different aspects of my leather work. Each month I've had a different theme, so um, one month I talk about the belt making and making the, the, the tool designs. One month I talk about guitar straps and what makes my guitar straps superior to the other one, others that are on the market and talked about how I constructed them and so forth. Um, I talked one specific month about the carving of the pictures and so forth. So if you want to get more detail on how I do the carvings and stuff, you can check out some of those videos. All my videos, again, are on Facebook which my Facebook page is, again, is Log Cabin Leather by Jan. But also I have a YouTube channel, and again, same thing, Log Cabin Leather by Jan. And if you go to that, um, you'll, obviously all the videos are there in one place. Um, the Maker Monday, again, generally talks about the stories and how I get started making the different products I make. A lot of the products I make, again, came from customers' ideas and things like that. Um, so that's what I talk about in the Mon Maker Monday. I've also been sharing places that have inspired me and so forth. Um, so um, this week I'm going to share about the Loon Preservation Committee because Loon's, of course, the, the bird, the um, black and white bird that I've been painting and showing this week um, is something that's very important to me. So I'm going to share about that because um, that's something that influenced a lot of my artwork. Um, so I'm sharing that on my Maker Monday. Workshop Wednesday, I take you into the workshop here, and I actually show you um, different aspects of creating my products. Again, it's not made to give you a lesson in how to do it. It's made to get you an understanding of how these are created, that they are all one of a kind, that they are all my own unique designs um, that I am creating um, as I go. 
so they're not you're not going to find them anywhere else that type of thing and what goes into the you know the law of attention the detail that goes into making them so that's in the spotlight the workshop wednesday and then the spotlight saturday is actually offering items for sale or showing current products i mean I'm, it's not really necessarily a sale but showing current products that i make such as this that now has used the designs that i've talked about during the week so kind of you know it kind of all goes together each week follows a say follows a theme and um you know each each live video kind of plays off of the one the previous one um so those are my three live events again they're here on my facebook page um maker Mon again the times vary i'm trying to go a little bit earlier now because now that um school is over and parents aren't doing the homeschooling so much um I'd love to know, though, what time is best to post. So if you're watching this, even if you're watching on a replay, please comment what time you think is the best time to watch these. Um, if there's other things you'd like me to talk about, please, you know, I'd love to hear your comments. You do have to follow the page in order to be able to leave a comment. If you know people that might be interested in this, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you'd like it or share it. Um, that helps a small business like mine grow. Um, so again, those are my three events I have each week. The Maker Monday the workshop Wednesday, the spotlight Saturday. Um, a lot of, most of my sales in general have been at craft shows. Most of those through the summer have been canceled, except now I have one that I guess is going to be a go. Um, all the rest right through the end of August, they've already canceled um, here in New Hampshire and even in New York and some other places, Maine. They've all canceled. Um, I have one that's pending, which is in Wolfboro. It's actually Christmas in July, so I have a lot of, you know, little stocking stuffer things and, and things that will be great for that. Um, and the earrings and so forth that I've been making, which is another topic I talked about one month, is about making all these little earrings and so forth. Um, that will be in Wolfboro. It is in July. It's like the 23rd through the 25th. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Generally, that was at Brewster Academy, right in the center of Wolfboro. Um, but again... I don't think the Brewster Academy is going to allow it there. Um, the you know promoter of the show says it is still going to be a go, but it's going to be a different location in Wolfboro. So that's all pending, and I'll have to let you know. But again, Wolfboro, it was a beautiful location, of course, on the lake, so right near my heart because I can hear and see the loons and so forth. Um, but again, so I'll keep you posted on the exact date, locations, and so forth on that. I know the show goes from like 10 to 5 each day, but again, I'm not exactly sure of the location. It will still be in Wolfboro, um, but just I don't think directly at the Brewster Academy. And that comes up in July, so I'll be giving you more information on that. Um, again, so I have the Maker Monday, the Spotlight Saturday, the Workshop Wednesday series each week. Maker Monday is obviously on Mondays. Times vary. Workshop Wednesday, every Wednesday, Spotlight Saturday, every Saturday. Um, I also have what I'll have coming up the end of this month or each month I'm doing now a live trunk show which is a live online sale and how that works is I'll have different items again this is going to be all about summer and things that you can use during the summer as you're traveling vacation fun things you know to wear and things like that as you're traveling so it will have things they'll be numbered um i'll tell you the price they, they will be listed on my facebook page so you can look at all the things ahead of time and and get a little more information about them and then if you join me on the live event you can ask the questions and stuff then and how that will work is like if you were interested in purchasing this you're just going to send me an email and say yes i would like that and so forth um i'll give you more details on how it works but it will be live right then in there online and you can you know put in in a comment yes i want that and then it will be set aside for you and you know i'll email you an invoice and so forth like that afterwards um so that will be on june 27th that is the saturday so that will be my spotlight saturday series i'm not sure what time i'm going to do it at this point yet um there's a lot of people doing these live things and these live trunk shows and stuff now because again we don't have the craft shows and our other venues to sell at um so I'm trying to pick a time that works good for um my listeners and a time that isn't going to interfere with all these other live events. So I'm not sure yet, but it is going to be on Saturday, June 27th. Um, and again, you know, I'll have about 20 items for sale or so, and I'll go through each one of them on my Facebook page. If you look under photos, you can see the trunk show that I had um, in May. It was Father's Day gifts ideas. 
um, and then this one again will also have a page like that will that will list all the items that will be for sale so you can preview them ahead of time um, so those are my upcoming events um, again mostly online the one craft show like I said that's the only one that got scheduled for the entire summer all the rest have been canceled um, so I'm not sure where we are with that fall of course they haven't canceled fall shows yet so I'll have to let you know that um, I honestly, my website, I have to update some of the information on the shows because um, I just got a couple more things. I had one in Maine that got canceled and um, this one that now that is possibly going to be go. So <laughs> I'll have to update that schedule because, again, it, it's constantly changing. Um, I think that's all for now. Thank you very much for joining me. This was Jan Hibbert from Log Cabin Leather. I'm here in the basement of my Log Cabin home where I make all my handmade leather products. Um, and again, these videos are to kind of enlighten you on how the products are made and to get you some understanding of what goes in and what's involved in making them. They're not mass produced by any machines. I have talked about the Glowforge that helps to cut things out for me, the intricate shapes and everything. But still, most of the work from there is done by hand, um, by me, here in my workshop. Or, like you said, at craft shows, a lot of times they demonstrate belt making and things like that. Or, you know, things like making metal flowers design right when I'm at the shows. Um, sometimes I do a make-and-take workshop where children can make their own things at the shows. But again, because of the COVID-19, that's not something I'll be doing this year. Just because of having everybody handle the different things and having to be that close. To, you know, I have to be close and, and help the kids and stuff. So, I don't think I'll be doing that this year. Um classes though and stuff is something I've done in the past too. I mean I have 30 years teaching experience so um, I have taught classes in the past but obviously that's not anything that's going to be happening in the near future either. Um, again I think that's about all I have to say for now. Thank you very much for joining me. This is Jan Hibbert from Log Cabin Leather. Um, again talking about my handmade leather products. Please join me on Saturday my Spotlight Saturday series I believe it's 1030 on Saturday morning where I'll be, again, showing a sneak peek of some of the things that will be in the trunk show later on this month that I don't have a list on Facebook yet or anything, but I will be working on that. So I'll be showing some of those um, items, a preview of some of the items that will be for sale. Um, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate any comments, likes, shares. Um, that helps the small business grow. Um, that's all I have to say for now. So you have a great day and stay safe, safe everybody. Bye.